What is up, my friends? Welcome back to another Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes guide. Uh, today we're going to be tackling the subject of mods. Now, mods is one of those things, if you learn how to do it well, it will take you from a good player to an exceptional player in this game. So it's one thing that I recommend that you learn how to do uh, to be a good Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes player. Now, today we're going to be breaking this down into two different videos. Uh, the first video, we're going to be covering the basics. So this is going to be for players who are just hitting level 40, coming into the game, trying to figure out how mods work. And then also for you guys who just want a better understanding of mods, because it can be a very convoluted and kind of complicated system to learn. Uh, so we're going to just break down the basics today. And then in the next video, we'll focus more on the resources that are out there. So you're figuring out the right mods and mod sets to go on your characters and then upgrading those mods, just kind of going through that process. So you're not uh, overspending your resources and uh, you know, using your credits when you don't need to be using those credits. So uh, we'll go into a more in-depth mod guide in the next one, but this was going to be covering the basis. So uh, if this is your first time here, welcome to the channel. Hopefully you enjoy the content. If you do, be sure to smash that subscribe button down below for more content in the future. So let's hop over into some gameplay and just kind of go over what uh, is available to you when you hit level 40. So at level 40, you're going to unlock these mod battles and mod challenges. Uh, and this is going to be how you acquire mods. And we'll go over those in a second. Um, just want to hop in and just kind of go over the basics of the mods on your characters first. So um, as you're leveling up, you know, you will have had this locked until you get to level 40. And at, at level 40, uh, you are able to start adding mods to your characters. Uh, and mods do exactly what they sound like. They are going to uh, give your characters extra stats uh, that will modify the way that they're used and their abilities, how strong they are, how defensive they are, uh, those types of things. So uh, it's a great way to enhance your characters. And if you enhance them correctly, it's going to make them stronger so you do better in the different game modes in the game. So let's hop in here. Now, there's two different ways to look at mods. There's a basic way, uh, the game that will do an auto assign. I find that that doesn't do a very good job for the most part. So I use the advanced uh, mode and then do all the modding myself. Now, uh, if you're looking at this character, this is a character, all these mods are maxed out on this character. So this is what it will look like when you get a character to max mod sets. And then I'll kind of break down how it goes from here. So there's six different mod slots. Uh, so you've got transmitters, you've got receivers, processors, hollow arrays, data buses, and multiplexers. And then there's a lot of different ways that these mods are upgraded and strength levels. So the first thing that we're looking at is the dot levels. So if you see the dots above the mod, so this is a six dot mod. Uh, when you're farming mods, you're gonna wanna go after five dot mods because those are the ones that can be upgraded to six dot mods. Uh, in the beginning stages of the game, it's okay to use some of those lower level mods, you know, those one, two, three, four dot mods. Uh, but later on, you're gonna wanna focus on five dot mods primarily because they can be upgraded to the best mods in the game. All right, other ways that these can be maxed out. So if you see the 15 next to this, this means that I have maxed these out with credits. So what that means is if you have one down here, you can hit upgrade and it is going to upgrade this and give more rolls on secondary stats. And then it just increases the primary stat levels and the secondary stat levels as well when you upgrade these up that way. So that's the second way that they can be upgraded. And then the third way is based on the letters that are on the, mo on the mods here. So let's hop over to just look at one set of mods here. So you've got these golden ones. These are A, uh, purples are B, blue C, and then so on down. And what that means is as they're upgraded higher up, it's going to give more rolls on secondary stats. So if you find one, even if it's an E-level mod, but it has really good stats, it may be worth slicing and upgrading that mod up to an A uh, to, for rolls on those really good stats that you need for secondary stats. So how you do that is by uh, clicking on the slice button. See if I can find a maxed out one that I can has the slice button here. So you hit slice. Uh, there's different materials that you need that will upgrade these to different tier level of mods. So we'll go over how to get these later on and we'll go more into slicing in the next video. All right, so the mods themselves, 
Uh, each one of them has a primary stat and then it has secondary stats available to them. These first two mods here, so the transmitters and the processors, these have set primary stats. So these are always going to be offense. The uh, processors are always going to be defense. And then from there, it starts giving a little bit of variety in what you can choose. So data buses can do either protection or health. And then for the receivers, the main thing that you're going to be going to go after most often is most characters function around speed. You're going to want to have uh, these receivers be speed arrows for their primary stats. Uh, and then the secondary stats, a lot of times I look for offense for those if I'm going for an offensive type character. Uh, but it can be different things based on what you're trying to do with that individual character for secondary stats. Uh, but there's a lot of different things that you can use, choose here. So there's accuracy. Not a lot of use for accuracy. A lot of times I just sell those. Um, there's defense, crit avoidance, offense. Um, then there's health um, as well. So there's different ones that you can add on here for primary stats for sure. Uh, health can be added as well. So there's, a, you know, get more variety in here based on what you're trying to do with the character. All right, hollow arrays also have that variety involved. Uh, just kind of a, you know, a pre-note to the next video. Crit damage is one of those that's hard to come by, especially crit damage with speed uh, for your attackers. So if you come across those, hold on to those. You're definitely going to need those for your best attackers in the game. Uh, but crit damage is one of those. There's crit chance. Uh, there is um, health protection. Uh, see what else if there's anything chance health protection defense is the other one uh, that's available here and then there's offense as well so there's a lot of different primary stats that you can add on with the hollow rays just like i said according to what you're trying to do for that individual character that you're you're modding all right and then lastly the multiplexers uh so offense is one of these there's health protection uh this also has the unique uh ability to add primary stats to tenacity and uh, potency as primary stats as well from here. So um, you can add protection health as well from the multiplexer. So a lot of variety in this when you're going to stat the characters up. All right, last thing to cover when it comes to just the basics of mods. So it's a lot of stuff to cover already um, is if you've noticed each one of these has a different emblem on them and these emblems stand for different mod sets. So mod sets give different bonuses based off the type of mod they are. So there's health, defense, crit damage, crit chance, tenacity, offense, potency, and speed. Now, a lot of these are require two, but there's some of them that require four for the set bonus. So crit damage, offense, and speed require four to get the set bonus, and then the rest of them just need two. And then the set bonuses are based off of the level of the mod. So if you have level 15 mods, you get a higher a bonus from the sets as well. So you're going to want to you know, kind of work in and make sets uh, you know, that have... Uh, you know, speed, crit chance, you know, those types of things where you're wanting to, you know, add those sets on to the main primary stats that you're wanting for the characters that you're modding. All right, that is the basic, you know, kind of outlay of modding a character. In the next video, we'll go more in depth on modding specific characters and how uh, to find the information to know that you're putting the correct mods and correct sets on those characters. Uh, but this will give you a good overlay of just what it means to mod a character, all the different you know leveling processes that are involved in here. Like there's three different ways to level up a mod. Uh, you know it's it gets convoluted and and confusing at times for sure for new players coming in and trying to figure it out. Now the next thing I want to hit in this video is just go over how to farm mods. So at level 40 you get access to these mod battles. And with mod battles, each one of these tiers has a mod that we've gone over uh, set. And what the main thing that you wanna do in these mod battles is just to get through the tier uh, because that's gonna unlock the mod challenge for this specific type of mod. And that's where you're gonna be doing the farming. Now, each one of these unlocks based on level. So it'll be something that you'll grind through in the leveling process if you're still in that leveling uh, stage. And then level nine, just kind of a quick overview. This is where you get the mats to do the slicing to upgrade the tier level of the mod. So if you're wanting to get that to a tier level A, uh, this is where you'll get the mats to kind of work through that process to slice those mods to upgrade them that way. All right, mod challenges, very last thing. This is where you're going to be farming those five dot mods. So after you've done the tier in the mod battles, uh, you can come in and do the different tiers here in the mod challenges. And what you're going to want to do is unlock 
tier three. This is going to give you access to five dot mods, and this is where you will sim those later on. So after you get through each tier in the battles, come over here to the challenges, get through tier level three, and then you can start simming your mod farming every day uh, to get those in. So like this is something that I'm doing. I do this on a daily basis. I usually try to split my energy. And look, it's not guaranteed five dots. See, I got a three dot mod there that will be sold. Um, and then you get a five dot mod uh, here. A lot of times with these that are more of a basic, like you get a lot of these, I'll sell these off because you, know, you get a lot of the better uh, to higher tier uh, of that type of mod so but anyway guys i hope this was helpful for you just to kind of give you a basic understanding of how mods work uh, be on the lookout i will drop the next video in the next day or so uh kind of going over a more in-depth guide to how to mod each specific character where the information is out there so you know what mod sets you should be putting on different characters somebody's already done that work for you thankfully uh, so we'll go over the resources to do that and then uh, just kind of how to level up mods and find uh, the secondary stats that you need what's a good mod what's a bad mod those types of things in that video so we'll get a little bit more advanced uh, so we are spending your resources wisely because it takes a lot of resources to do mods well. So, uh, but hope you enjoy the content. If you've got any questions, leave them down below and I will see you guys in